Okay, young lady. How you doing, young lady? I'm doing fine. What's your name, your age, and where you from? My name is Dee Dee. I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina. I'm 48 years old. Are you 48? I thought you were younger than that. <laughs> no, I'm 48. <laughs> oh, you're 48? That's what's up. <laughs> hey, um, what's your name again? My name is Dee Dee. Dee Dee. Mm -hmm. um, let's get to know you a little bit. Uh, start with your childhood. Did you grow up in a two-parent household? I did grow up in a two-parent household. I had a mom and a dad. Um, everything was great. My dad worked. My mom stayed at home. Um, things started to get crazy, you know, when I was about five years old. I was raped by my cousin that was 17. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And then I was uh, molested by my uncle when I was eight. But how old was you? I was eight when I was molested by my uncle. You was eight? So how long, how long did that go on? Um, it went on for a couple of years. Oh, and... hold on. Check, 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 that, that broke your pad. Oh, you going that way? Hey, yo, you said, you, said, you, said, you said how long it lasts? It went on for a couple of years until, you know, he moved away. He ended up getting in trouble and going to prison for something else. I didn't never tell nobody until I was 16. Oh, yeah? Who did you tell? I told my mom. And what she said? She didn't believe me. She thought I was lying. Of course, she, you know, she stayed in the bars a lot. I stayed at home with my dad a lot when I got older. From the time I was 13 until I was 18, when I got married, I helped raise my two brothers that weren't really my brothers, they were my cousins that were adopted. Right. And um, so it was just me and my dad and them up until I was 18. I got married when I was 17. Okay. Um, I ended up having kids of my own. I grew up. Um, I was married for 19 years. Everything okay. was okay. It seemed okay. And then I just, I, my dad died. When my dad died, I lost my best friend. Right. So, um, hold on. Hey, hey, bro, we we trying to do an interview right here, bro. But but anyway, um, where were we at? Okay, so let me ask you, did you, did you finish school? Yes, I did. I graduated high school. Um, I went on to college. I got a cosmetology degree, which I do nothing with now. <laughs> okay. So, you know, it was kind of a waste of time, I guess. And then I was a nurse. I did get my nursing degree. I just became homeless like three years ago. Right. But I've been doing drugs for the past 11 years. Okay, so uh, let's, let's talk about that first. Um, how old was you when you first started using drugs? When I first started using drugs, I was 30 years old. 30 years old? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was my, my youngest daughter's dad got me started. Started out smoking marijuana. I was mm -hmm. never a, a drug user or anything like that. I was always active in school and all that stuff. So I was never none of that. But he got me started on cocaine. From cocaine, it, it went to pills. And from pills, it went to bigger things. <laughs> like what? Um, so now I do heroin. I've been doing heroin for the past 11 years. Okay. Thank you. Talk about your heroin addiction. Um, how much How much you spend on how much, is it? How expensive is it and how do you support your habit? Ooh, it was really expensive. It was. It was really expensive. Um, I was spending $400 a day. Um, I started out turning tricks. I started out prostitution. And then I started boosting, which, you know, in turn led to a criminal record, which I never had until I was 38 years old. And so from then on, it just, it just trickles down. <laughs> it just trickles down. So right. it's not a lifestyle I, I recommend to anybody, any female, any any female at all, stay away from drugs, stay away from any of that. It's it's not worth it because people don't do nothing but use you and abuse you. Yeah. I've been raped. I've been stolen from. Them, I've been robbed. Um, I've been held at gunpoint, threatened. They, they threatened to blow my brains out. Um, I've lost everything I've had six times over. Wow. And now I'm back out here on the street again. Right. So um, I heard you say you was homeless. And you said you've been homeless for three years. Mm-hmm. So where you sleep at? You sleep anywhere you can? Or? Um, right now I sleep anywhere I can. They got um, a tent or ain't nothing like that? No, my tent got stolen. It's That's another thing. When you're homeless, people steal stuff. Steal your stuff. It's not like being in a house. It's not like you can lock the door. And right. You can stop people from going in because even if you did lock the zippers, they on cut it, it. you can still cut it. <laughs> right, that's right. So, I mean, it's like every day I'm going over trying to get a new wardrobe, trying to get clothes, trying to get everything that I need to be able to do what I got to do to survive day to day. Right. So, uh, what, what, what about the IRC? You ever went down there? Yeah, I went to the IRC. The IRC, they're, they're currently trying to help me get an apartment. Okay, so they are helping people. Yeah. Well, some people say they do help. Some people say they don't help. Some people say no, they they're help. taking out all the it good stuff, time. and it, it, takes it takes time, right? It does. It takes time. It takes time. There's there's emergency cases out there. Like there's an older guy that stays over there where I'm dead. I'm homeless. He lives in front of McDonald's, in front of a dumpster in, in McDonald's, and he lives on the ground. And they're trying to get him in a home. And I mean, it's emergency situations that have to go for people like me that can actually walk around and do things. Like, I've tried to get employment. My criminal record stops me from getting employment. Uh, any, you can't get no kind of employment, huh? I've tried. Like, I've I know tried a lot of people that, that did 20 years that got jobs. Yeah, and see, and that's what I don't understand what it is. I don't know if it's the part that's the drug charge that puts them off or whatever. Sometimes I believe that they would rather you be a thief than be a drug user. <laughs> yeah. 
And I mean, and that's just being honest. Right. It is. It's just being honest. When they get to that part on that record where it says drug use. So, so did you? So you? So you did go to jail behind it? Yeah, I did go to jail. I, mean, no, I did two never, years in prison. Oh, you did went to prison? Yeah, I did. I did two years in prison, and then um, I got ran in on by vice and narc. I got caught with fourteen grams of heroin. Um, that's trafficking and, charge, right? Yeah, I got arrested in front of my three-year-old granddaughter, mm -hmm. my pregnant daughter, which was terrible. My three-year-old granddaughter now is scared of the police. Oh, oh, is that yeah, right? she's scared of the police because she's seen her Mimi get locked up and that's not something I tell her all the time not to be afraid of the police I tell her all the time don't be afraid of the police they're there to help you they're not there to hurt you all the time your Mimi did something bad right you know I had to explain to her that I did Wait, something you good? they can't see <laughs> I had to explain to her that I did something to make them want to do that right you know and, and that was kind of rough but so you sound like a woman that accept uh, responsibility and accountability for your actions oh yeah most definitely and I'm currently trying to get into a detox center out in California oh yeah I feel like leaving here would be the best thing for me right they say um, you gotta change people places and things right I wanna go somewhere where nobody knows me so how you gonna get out to California if they do, if they do accept you to um, rehab well, I'm an insurance company. I do finally got insurance, and my insurance company will pay for it. And if that insurance company don't pay for it, they get you funded through Blue Cross Blue Shield. Did you have to pay for the rehab? Yeah, I'm talking about how you going to get, get out. They how you going to get there? They pay oh, they do? Oh, yeah. yeah? The Blue Cross Blue Shield will pay for the okay. ticket to get there. Okay. Um, And they pay you while you're out there. They'll pay you $1,400 a month to go to rehab, go through detox and all that Dang. stuff. And um, as long as you do what you're supposed to, and they'll help you. And then you, you look at the government's giving you $1,400 a month. To go to a rehab. To, to clean yourself up. To, help, to better yourself. To do something. So I'm it's a win-win situation. It's a win-win situation. I'm just waiting on the bed. That's all I'm waiting on. It's a bed. Right. I know that. It's noticed. a real sickness. It, it is. It really is. It's a real sickness. And I would say, I would definitely say that there are more people now on heroin than there was, ever was. That right. I remember back in the day. Yeah, the, the, you know, why every people, everybody still saying heroin, but it really ain't no more heroin, heroin out here. It's no more heroin. It's all fit now. It's all fit now. Right. It's all man made stuff. It's all synthetic. Half the time, you don't know what you're getting. You could be getting a tranquilizer. When you take that tranquilizer, as soon as you do it, you're out. You don't know nothing. Like, you're out. Oh, that train. That, that's, that new, that's that thing they do up in Philly. They call it a train. Right. And, and it's here. Is it? It's here. It's here. It's purple. And, and, it's here. And that's the, so they're making people have holes in their skin, sore Well, through. I ain't got no sores or no holes in my skin, but as soon as I do it, I'm out. I'm out. Okay. And then when so I it's around up, here already. Yeah, and when I wake up, I'm still sick. And then I'm, I don't know what happened to my stuff. Like the other day, my pocketbook got stolen. My phone got stolen. Everything. And it's all because I did something that I thought was something that it wasn't. So so, so the, 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 the what you call a trank? Yeah. The trank, it, it looked the same way. It looked, it's, it's a purple. pattern form like? It's a yeah, pattern form like? Form and it's purple. Oh, okay. It's got a purple tint to it. But as soon as you do it, you're out. You, you can't stop it. Like you're out. And Narcan, don't touch it. I've out of 11 years. Knock on wood, I've never overdosed and I've never had to be Narcan. And I've been to the point where I feel like I probably would have died, but I'm by myself all the time. Right. You know, so anything can happen to me at any time. So I'm just really trying to get clean for my grandkids. Right, that's right, that, that's good. Let me ask you something. Outside of your drug addiction, besides that, cause what's, what's your biggest regret in life? See, every time I ask that question, like, oh, I wish I never got high the first time. And I, and I get that, that should be your biggest regret. But I get that answer all the time. So I be wanting to hear regret, something. Yeah. My biggest regret is blaming myself for the things that happened to me as a child that was not my fault. Wow, so so when you was getting bruised, was sexually bruised, you've you, you, you been beating yourself up like it was your fault. I was a child. And you was a kid. Mm -hmm. I was a child. I could, they were grown men. There was nothing I could do about that. Dang. Man. Right, that's a good answer. Yeah, and and yeah, you got you got to let that let that go, or get some help for it because uh, you was power you were powerless in that situation. I know you might think that you, that you was old enough and you knew what was going on. You might be able to say no. Then, nah, listen, we all think I thought I was grown when I was five, but yeah. you but 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 you might feel like you're grown, mm -hmm. but but another grown a real grown person. I take right. advantage of you. You, you. You're just a baby. Right. Yeah, I was. Just so a baby. so let so you gotta let that go. Yeah, I do gotta let it go. And I gotta let it go that it wasn't my mom's fault either. Even though she was in the house and she was asleep at the other end of the house, it still wasn't her fault. It was, it was a person who, who abused person you. person who did it. Sometimes our parents can do a better job at protecting us, but at the same time, it, it, the person that fought was a person who abused you. Exactly. I mean, not unless, not unless the, the, your mama told him to go in and do it, which oh, I know no. she didn't. No, she so didn't. therefore, the person that fought, yeah, you gotta, you gotta forgive your mama yeah. too. Give her that, give her that, that, that resentment in your heart. Because I'm walking around with resentment in your heart every day. It's a miserable life. It is a miserable life, and it will hinder you in so many ways that you wouldn't believe it will hinder your blessings. I promise you that. Uh oh, I already know. <laughs> it will hinder your blessings. <laughs> hey, look, I had to let a lot of things go get out of my heart. You hear me? It really will hinder yeah, your I, blessings. I ain't no different than nobody else. But yeah. um, that's a good answer. Listen, before I end these interviews, 
I always ask the person I'm interviewing to get a youth or another grown person that's thinking about choosing that lifestyle that ain't chosen it yet, but thinking about jumping out there. What type of advice would you give somebody not to ever choose that lifestyle? Don't do it. Call somebody, talk to somebody. Somebody out there will listen. This ain't a life you want to live, I promise you. Whether it's the drugs, the homelessness, or anything. Talk about what's wrong. Don't bottle it up. But don't beat yourself up for it. It's not your fault. Just talk to somebody. Somebody's out there going to listen. And somebody will give you the right advice. Man, that's, that's excellent advice. I appreciate your time. God bless you. And I got something for you.